Oh, it's time for class. Class is in session! Roll call! Bueller. I'm gonna be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Late for class. You're mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Welcome to Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Pete. And I'm Tyler. And I'm Joseph. And today we're going to be reviewing on this review episode, my pick from the Wheel of Destiny, a classic from my childhood, Rocket Man from 1997. Coming soon to video cassette. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Disney Mars, movie. Mars, the red planet. For billions of years, it just sat it's got there. Mustache, right? Peaceful, quiet, unsuspecting. But one man is going to change all that. And now, our final member of the Mars team, astronaut Fred Randall. <laughs> Rocket Man. This kid is our last hope. He's fearless. <laughs> Hello, my little Ewok. <laughs> Computer genius. He's supposed to be a little weird. A little. He's determined. Yeah. How fast does this little tree twirl? And what's the most important thing at NASA, children? Safety. <laughs> and he's got nowhere to go. Are we there yet? But up. This fall. Be careful you don't get sucked out when you flush. Fred Randall's more than a hero. Oh, I shouldn't have had those space beans. He's a breath of fresh air. What? Oh my god. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> oh man. Disney's Rocket Man. Trust me, he'll be a total professional. Whoopsie! <laughs> Beautiful. Now that is a trailer that brings back a lot of memories. Sure. Mm -hmm. Even if not just for Don LaFontaine. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah. mm. Rest his soul. So yeah, Rocket Man, 1997. Not to be confused with the biopic that is follows the life and times of El El John. Elton John, mm -hmm. played by, what's his name? Taryn... Taryn Egg... Ed not Taryn Egerton. Egerton. Ed Egerton? Taryn Ed Egerton? Yeah, Taryn Egerton. Ansel Elgort? I always get those two mixed up. Taryn Joel Egerton. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, this movie's not streaming anywhere uh, that I could find. Nope. Uh, yeah. So I had to rent it for four... I had to pay four dollars for this. I know. Yeah. But uh, thankfully... <laughs> The quality was better than that trailer. Jesus Christ. That was like a rip off of a VHS or something. VHS rip. Coming soon to video cassette. <laughs> oh, my God. This movie is starring one Harlan Williams and a bunch of other people that don't matter, like William Sadler. But this is essentially the Harlan Williams show. Jessica Lundy plays Julie Ford. William Sadler plays Wild Bill Overbeck. Jeffrey DeMunn plays Paul Wick. Paul Wick. James Pickens Jr. as Ben Stevens, Bo Bridges as Bud Nesbeth, and a number of other people that you might recognize. And what? Shelley Duvall as the mom. Yeah, an uncredited yeah. role. Shelley Duvall as, yeah. as Fred Randall's mom. Why so, uncredited? She's kind of in the movie. I know. A she's good amount of time. She's in it a number of times. She was too embarrassed. I, maybe. <laughs> Fred Z. Randall is geeky and obnoxious spacecraft designer who gets the chance to make his dreams come true and travel to Mars as a member of the first manned flight there. Now that is the synopsis, and that's pretty much what we get in classic, zany, late 90s Disney Channel movie fashion. Yeah. And this is not a Disney Channel movie. This is a Disney, a standalone Disney movie, yeah. Yeah. which was on a heavy rotation when I was a kid. I would have been 11 when this came out. And 97, yeah. Yeah, and it was, I don't want to say formative for me. I think it was like <laughs> just on the cusp of maybe a little too wow, old. This for, is comedy. For the humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I still found it very fun when I was a kid, and I I remember thinking the con the concepts were so dumb, but they were very fun. Like mm -hmm. farting in the spacesuit, mm -hmm. yeah. you can't blame it on anybody, but he still somehow s wasn't me. I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, the reason I put this on the wheel is just because we've had so many serious movies lately, mm -hmm. 
And I saw this as a kid and lighthearted fun. Yeah, it's lighthearted fun. Yeah, farting in a spacesuit. It's on the poster. It's right, right there. He's blown. Yeah, that's that puts butts in seats. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what more do you want? Yeah. A flatulent space uh, traveler. So, anyways, this is obviously not my first watch. Have you guys seen this before? I have. Yes. Okay, so all this is all revisit, and it's all been since childhood, right? Yep. Yes. Did you guys watch it? In ninety seven. So were you no. five, six years old? I would I don't yeah, I definitely didn't watch it. I can't recall what, it, what came out. I can't recall if I watched it in ninety seven, but I know was it was pre mono, like, Tyler or post mono. This was <laughs> So do you, do you remember it or not? Oh, okay. I do. So post mono. You yeah. would have been eleven or twelve. Yeah. So it was definitely no, not eleven or twelve. Like it was so it came out in ninety seven, right? So yeah. it was probably yeah, I guess like between the ages of eight and ten, okay, probably saw it. All right, cool. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give us your initial reaction uh, to the rewatch? So mm-hmm. many years later, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I am caught with my pants down because I watched the Elton John biopic, and mm-hmm. then uh, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. That was a bad joke. good joke. Yeah, good bad one. joke. Bad joke. <laughs> Very and good. Then, another, um, another home run. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this movie was really annoying, and it was just really excruciating to watch this movie. Like, I was trying to find something good about it, but it was like the whole zany factor of the character Randall. Like, it was just like, it just really took me out of the movie. Okay, I like the idea of of someone who is just a private contractor for a space, for NASA. Uh-huh. And him being, and he like designed like the computers and stuff. And I don't mind him being not fitting the form of what an astronaut should be, but it just, it felt a little bit overplayed. However, when I watched this as a young boy, I was laughing all the time. I was laughing all the time. I can see how if you showed this to a little one, they would love it. Because a nine-year-old would love this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a 31-year-old Tyler yeah, no. did not land. It didn't land. It crashed upon entry. It's funny. I was thinking about this while I was watching the movie, how fun that set would have been. Like, it must have been such a fun movie to film, especially, like, with the budget they had. And, and like, the it's chimp. Disney. The chimp. Like, and that's another. Well, we, we can, <laughs> we'll get into that later. But ultimately, though, I wouldn't watch this. Even if I was feeling nostalgic, I wouldn't revisit this movie on my own. There is a bunch of other movies that I would revisit based on nostalgic longing, but this one isn't it. But if I had a little one, I would definitely sit them down and and let them watch. You say, kid, watch this. What would your child's name be, by the way? Oh, it would be Sterling. Sterling, okay. Yeah. All right, Sterling. Sterling K. Brown. Sterling, you're here. <laughs> All right, Sterling. You're going to see the peak of entertainment from 1997. Yeah. Actually, no, the full name is John Sterling. John Sterling? Yeah. What, what is that from? I know it's from something. No, I don't know. I don't know what it is from. But that, You want to name your kid John? No offense to any Johns out there, but what a terrible name. That's not a terrible <laughs> name because it's a hyphenated John name. John Sterling, American sports commentator. Oh, interesting. So you, <laughs> That's where I knew it from. Does he uh, comment for the Steelers? Uh, Probably not. American sports cast, best known as the radio play-by-play announcer of Major League Baseball, New York Yankees. Mm. Oh. Yeah. I never pegged you for a Yankees fan, you freaking turncoat. No, I'm not a Yankees <laughs> fan. I'm always going to be a Giants fan. Anyways, I wouldn't revisit this movie on my own accord, but if I was like showing my nephews Papa. or nieces... I want to watch um, Rocket Man. <laughs> no, I would just say, I would just pl- if I had to babysit someone and I'd just plop them down on the couch and I'd just turn that on, they'd get a good laugh out of it. It's not my flavor of film, but I can see how it could be for little kids. Sure. Right. Maybe. It yeah. is what it's for. Yeah. But yeah. Didn't like it, but kids might. Yeah, so it's, it's away. Yeah, it's like a weird paradoxical thing. It's, <laughs> I know it's, was, I, it's a... <laughs> It's it's it operates in the recesses of just our imagination. It just it's it, what's weird about it is that I can appreciate the content of it, but I just I don't I don't know. It's okay. Take your stand. It's a bad it's, movie, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying, right? It's a bad movie. No, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's just not a movie for yeah. me. Okay, Joseph, how did you like it on rewatch? 
So yeah, so this was a movie that I watched frequently as a kid. Oh. Frequently. Oh wow. And I probably didn't. I probably didn't watch it in the '90s. I probably watched it like in the early 2000s. Okay. It was on cable a lot, and I would just pick it up whenever. Right. <laughs> in the middle of the movie. You guys uh, had the Disney Channel, or was it on? It was else? probably on. I don't know, Stars or something. This was a money maker for Disney. I guarantee it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't remember honestly if I ever thought it was funny. But right. I just watched it because it was on. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the cinematic equivalent of filler. Yeah, I'm like I'm just like I'm, I'm channel flipping, and I'm like. I've seen this before. I guess I'll just watch it again because I'm tired of channel flipping. All right. Let me just eat my bowl of goldfish okay. and watch something. <laughs> it really primed us. That t- that behavior really primed me for needing something to watch while I'm eating. Goldfish was the move, though, back in the day. <laughs> goldfish and the Tupperware. Yeah. Real good. That shit hits. But yeah, I'm like, I'm in Tyler's camp. Dad did not really enjoy this on an, uh, an, an adult viewing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As an adult watching this is... Slightly worse than Howard the Duck. Okay. <laughs> the character, the main character, is not as insufferable as Howard the Duck, but the comedy, I think, is what is the bad part because right. it was just unfunny. <laughs> you didn't like the fart? <laughs> no, I did not like the fart. <laughs> you didn't like when he's in zero G and he asked him to turn it up? No. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> is artificial gravity a real thing? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I dude, that's what I always thought as a kid. I'm like it, turning on this artificial gravity. Never happen. You have to suspend your disbelief for this movie. I guess so. Yes, you do. And I'm like, we've been to Mars <laughs> as a human. Is it spent to spend your disbelief or suspend your suspend your disbelief? Disbelief. No, you suspend your belief. I have to spend my belief. Suspend your. I think if you suspend your disbelief, then you're believing everything. Yeah, exactly. You have <laughs> oh, to wait, you have okay. to do that in order to enjoy this movie because you you're poking. Well, then why is everyone the, saying that? Then isn't it know. suspend your belief? I think it's your disbelief because then you're you're basically saying I know it's not real, but I'm choosing to ignore. I guess that. I don't know. Either way, like the part where he said, "Sweet Alaskan asparagus tips." No, okay, uh, that was a very. Memorable I think the line. funniest part of the movie is when he gets uh, announced that he's going to be the astronaut, and he screams like a contestant <laughs> like on a America's um, uh, uh, not America's Next Top Model. What the American the Idol. pageant? The the beauty oh, pageant, the... Miss America, like a Miss America contestant, at realizing that she won. <laughs> because that's essentially what it was inspired by. Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, I don't. I didn't find really anything redeemable. A whole lot. It's not like offensively bad, but I just didn't find it funny. All right. Uh, it was a stone face the whole time. <laughs> and I can just imagine Joe's. But it was just but it was a movie that I watched a lot as a kid for some reason. Because I, it's funny for kids. I guess so. But I don't remember ever laughing out loud at this movie. <laughs> it's I guess how I watched like Biodome was another movie. Oh, Biodome rips, dude. Biodome is that's what I, real, I, that's that one what I remember from watching Biodome, because that was another frequent movie that I watched. Uh, different type of comedy, but kind of equally as stupid. Feels like in the same universe, though, yeah. That one, I I have more nostalgia with compared to this one. Okay. Not that they're... I guess they're comparable in terms of... I think so. Comedy. One of them is the adult version of Rocket Man. It's been said many times. They're both sci-fis, <laughs> it's a, in a way. It's a cliche for a reason at this point. Wait, that's what they say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Rocket Man... Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. No. All right. That's fair. I think I'm going to have to be the one that stands out amongst the crowd because I thought this was a perfectly fun kids movie and it's lowest common denominator kids entertainment. Hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not. Yeah, we're not looking. <laughs> we're not looking for greatness in everything that we show our children. Sure. Sometimes you just got to put on a Peppa Pig and walk out of the room and let the kids. But uh, I'm not a kid. I'm a me. You are aware of the existence of children. In this. But I'm not a children. I'm not a children watching this. But do you, I'm a me watching this. You're a me? You're, yeah. a, you're an avatar in the Wii universe? Yes. <laughs> no, it's in the PlayStation Home universe. No, no me's are, are for the, the Nintendo, Nintendo Wii. Wii. The, the little I know I was saying weird claymation dublo looking big headed bl- yeah, balloon freaks. heads yeah yeah I completely I'm in agreement with all you guys in, in sure. this that the jokes don't always work but I feel like you're turning off your brain in order to uh, indulge in the um, it almost feels like it would have been right alongside 
the fatties fart too <laughs> in the Tropic yeah. Thunder universe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where it's like the joke is the fart. Yeah. The fart is the joke. Yeah. And also this They only pr- laugh at my farts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every joke is the most obvious bit of like parody that you can get. Mm-hmm. Okay. But at the same time, I like Harlan Williams. I think that he's got a kind of a pure soul to him. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's something oddly charismatic about him and how annoying he is. Like he's not trying to be annoying. He is just a weird ass guy. Yeah. And this character translates here. Um, I think that he's. I like the little bits of the. And this is common with the all of the Disney original movies, and Disney Channel original movies. Is they're parodying other movies that are done better, but they're doing it in this like weird machine. Like they're churning out these movies mm. back, you know, constantly. It's always a new movie coming out. The Disney machine. They're a money making machine. They're not looking for high art. They're looking for watching. You know. You can put this on the Disney Channel, and you can plop your kids down in front of it, and it's, it's going to be watch it for more, hours. more or less wholesome content. Yeah. I mean, farts are not unwholesome. Hmm. <laughs> farts are funny. Yeah, farts are funny. Everybody farts. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I don't want to live in a world where someone farts next to me, and I don't laugh. Unless I'm in an elevator, then I like cringe. <laughs> then I have to experience their fart for longer than I want. Yeah. But, no, it's like... The framework of the story feels mm-hmm. like something else, like a Apollo 13 or something. There's a one point when they come and reach him, and they say, your programming is wrong. We keep running this test, and it keeps crashing. And he says the cliche, that's not possible. I programmed it myself. <laughs> As if you're imp- it's impossible yeah, for this yeah. person to make a... He's perfect. Yeah, he's perfect in this yeah. scenario. I like the whole cliche bit aspect of it. And what I really liked about it is they got William Sadler to suffer through this entire movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Who like, looks like he would be... In an Apollo movie. Yeah. yeah. I feel like he would be right at home in an Apollo 13 or something like that. Maybe he failed an He's audition. Look. He may be, he f- probably failed an audition. Like an alter Ed Harris. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. There's a, a number of known people that are in this movie, and I don't think it's shameful. I think something like, what's it called? Nine Lives, where Kevin Spacey is turned into a cat. That's, what? That's a, that's a bad movie. <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah is that a Disney movie? Uh, I don't think so. But it's, nice. you know, Tim Allen's The Shaggy Dog, again, yeah. where he gets turned into a dog. Yeah, and you're where like, he gets turned into 2016, a dog. Nine Lives. Yeah. that's You weird. never heard that? No. Barry yeah. Sonnenfeld. Yeah, Barry Sonnenfeld directed it. Wow. Yeah, it was weird. I was, it was, it was It's an oddity. But anyways, that's a shitty movie. This is just a kid's movie. And yeah, yeah absolutely. There's a number of fun scenes about it that g- give it a little bit of charm because he is a more or less, he's more or less like a sweetheart in this movie. He's a dim-witted fool that is also has a heart of gold. Yeah. yeah. And I liked the fact that I, I forgot it was a Disney property. Brianna had said that, and I'm like, I don't think I don't think it's a Disney movie. And she was right. She'll never hear this because she doesn't listen to the podcast, but you were right. And <laughs> Wait, she doesn't listen no, to the she show? Does not. She does not. She's not a fan of podcasts in general. Oh, okay. um, she hears enough of me flapping my gums as it is in her real life. <laughs> but I liked the bits where they were able to take the Disney standards, the When You Wish Upon a Star song. Him singing that is charming. That yeah. was good. That was a good scene. He's a little dope. He's a yeah. little. He's, he's just, a little yeah. doofus guy, and he's, he's, a, he's a dopey genius. Yeah, and he sings the song, and it's super yeah. sweet. And he does a little bit where Bo Bridges is sending him off. The guy who supposedly fucked up the first Apollo mission or whatever, Apollo Eleven. Oh no, it was Apollo Thirteen. Yeah, and he's sending him off to this Mars mission. He gives him this little coin or whatever, and he tells him, "Don't worry, I'm brave. I'm, I'm like the lion." The fool, then, or the king, or the fool. He just does the whole monologue of the cowardly lion. I love it. It's great. And it's just it uh, stuck in my head as a kid, and I still have it in there. And I, and <laughs> it brought back fond memories for me. I think that it is, it's worth talking about. There are movies from that era that are worth forgetting, and I think this is one that's worth remembering. Sure. It's not Kino. It's not going to be an Oscar winner. You're not going to change lives by watching this movie. No. But it's dumb, mostly wholesome fun. So that's where I come down on it. I agree with you not having this movie be forgotten because this is a really wholesome, good movie to show to, like, little ones. Regarding the coins things, though. Coin things? What do you mean? When When he gives them that coin? When he gives them the coin because he goes into a monologue, or not a monologue, but he goes into a little speech saying, yeah, I got two coins. I got one for... Uh, what was it? Courage, one for bravery Cur- or something like one, that? Yeah, it was like one for courage and then one for 
resilient. No, it wasn't resilience. But he got three coins, and then he gave he gave Randall the yeah. bravery coin. Uh. Out of all the people. Out of all the people that you could have given this beloved coin. You don't think that it's brave for a civilian who just got two weeks worth of training, three weeks, three weeks <laughs> worth of training right. to go into you space? Know, you know, you're absolutely, actually, you know what? I take that back because <laughs> I forgot he only trained for three, two, three weeks, 20, two, was 21 yeah, days. Yeah, three weeks he trained as an astronaut. And I could understand why the other astronaut was so pissed off because he's been working his whole life to do sure. this. And this schmuck comes out and just because he's a computer genius and he he infirmed that other computer scientist with his test. He injured him? <laughs> yeah. Well, he did it, to be fair, he did it to himself because they go, they, real, they think that there's something wrong with the programming. Yes. And what's his name? Fred Randall? Yeah, Fred the, Randall. The, Fred, oh, oh, it's both. Okay. <laughs> Fred yeah. Randall. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Z. Randall. Yeah. So Fred goes to, you know what? Because they do call him Randall a bunch, right? Yeah, they yeah, do. Because it's, okay, yeah, it's like almost yeah. like a military scenario. Yeah. So he they go to his office and he drives this ridiculous, I thought it was a Volkswagen thing, but I looked it up. It turns out it's a Citroen like 2CA or something like that. Never heard it before. Or maybe not a Citroen. Yeah, it is a Citroen. 2CV is what huh. it is from 1974. Never heard of that before. Yeah, it's a weird odd, oddity. But he wrote the code for the Mars mission, yeah. and they come to tell him that it's wrong, and he says, all right, I'm going to enter the same calculations using what we like to call the right way. <laughs> and then the astronaut, and then he, the ast- they, they prove that it works, and the astronaut says, no, I put the data in, blah, blah, blah. He puts the data in, and then he gets knocks himself out with the model. And then, and then it's not his fault. It's not Randall's fault. What's weird about his injuries, though, is like he had like a neck brace and everything. He was in a, he's wheelchair bound as well. It's like, what happened to him? He, <laughs> yeah, he gets progressively more and more injured as the time goes on. Because while well, he still is able to participate, actually, no, the first guy gets knocked out, and then they bring in the second guy, and they're like, okay, we can either do this random dude who has failed tests in the past. He's a potential, like, a second runner-up for the astronaut. Or, yeah. hear me out, Fred, Fred Randall. <laughs> yeah, Fred Randall. No real explanation either about I mean, that. It, yeah, it was, a bit, like, you don't, you can hand wave that, though, because it's, it's already a ridiculous premise to begin with. Yeah. But I re- one, of, one of my favorite lines in the beginning of the movie where he's going into his office and he's, ooh, five minutes? Five minutes until clock time or work time. Yeah. And then he just starts playing video games. I'm just like, that's so awesome. Because like I have to, for my job, like I have to clock in five minutes before like my Uh actual clock time. So I was thinking, oh, that would be so cool just like to play video games for five minutes before (laughs) before you clock in. This character, I feel like he's just, he lives in the same pantheon of characters that I should say, maybe not characters, but Harlan Williams. He feels very similar to me how the mind of Robin Williams works, Hmm. where every little saying thing that somebody says sends him off into a weird tangent. Yeah. And if you were to actually go and listen to the Harlan Highway, his podcast, I don't know if it's still like it was. He has a show? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. We talked about it last week when you were gone, but. Everyone has a show. Yeah. He's he's been, he's had his podcast since 07. Oh, really? I used to listen to him back in the early days of podcasting. Since 07, wow. Yeah. And it was exactly what you'd think. It's high energy non no linear storytelling whatsoever it's 12 Mm. minutes of chaos and then this (laughs) and the episode's over oh wow but he'll say something like for example they're talking about the point of the mission and he talks to his new love interest Mm -hmm. new to him he's been pining over her for years yeah she's this smoke show of an astronaut yeah and he gets put on the mission with her and they're talking about what their point is and she says we're going to send ulysses here and he's going to be retrieve specimens for us. And we're going to test the specimens and look for water. Yeah. And he says, because where there's water, there's life or death. When the crust dwelling Martian overlords with their forked tails and red sucking mouths. And- that's that sucking sound made me, that actually that made me laugh. Like, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to say like I didn't laugh throughout that. I didn't. There wasn't a time where I didn't laugh through this movie. I wasn't like Joseph where he was stone faced. <laughs> stone faced. Hmm. I like the the callbacks or to classic cinema. They have the Cowardly Lion reference. They mm-hmm. have they they reference Doctor Zaius from the original Planet of the Apes. Yeah, because he says, "Hey, my little Ewok, look at you. You're like <laughs> I'm got in a fly fight with little Doctor Zaius over here." <laughs> And then he has a, his constant like penchant for denying 
the tomfoolery that he's got himself into. It wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me, which was the first words spoken on yeah. on Mars. I think that it got a little bit overused in the movie. Like I thought it was I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay, but um it just got a little bit overused. However, I think of the ridiculousness of of Fred Randall being like going on this historic mission Mm -hmm. for our society and he's the one who's chosen granted he has programmed like every computer like on the ship yeah so it on paper it makes sense but like when you see someone like that he's an agent of chaos is what he is (laughs) he's an agent of chaos (laughs) and you and you really don't want chaos on a mars a man to mars mission yeah um also another thing which I actually I'm glad that they they pointed out in the movie story wise was the whole hypers the hypersleep sort of thing. Sure. And first of all, I don't understand how he couldn't open the door with the useful U- Ulysses. U- Ulysses. Ulysses. Uh, like, <laughs> you, yeah. I don't know monkey. why. I don't. I don't know why he couldn't just open the door as soon as he got in. Like because we wouldn't have the bit of him being awake for well, three years. I know that. Or however long. How was yeah. it? Three months? No, eight months. Eight months. Okay. It was eight months, <laughs> and the commander was rightfully to be pissed off. Because okay, he, uses, he uses all their food yeah, to uh, paint like to paint. to paint a Michelangelo sort of painting of him and the monkey on the ceiling. Isn't this? Isn't I that, did. I laughed at that. Isn't that the plot of Passengers? That, that Chris Pratt movie with Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Like they're on a hyperspace oh, yeah, mission. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what it is. He, he purposely keeps her awake. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That, oh man, I forgot about that movie. But See, the long, the resonance and the ripples in the pond of time <laughs> that are caught beginning with Rocket Man from 1997. I know we wouldn't have that movie we, if it wasn't for the Rocket influence Man. has still to. yet to be discovered. How deep it goes. <laughs> I like the part. I like the part where he's vaguely insensitive to uh, the Chinese culture, but he's on the he's on the walkway, and uh, Bo Bridges' character says, "Hey, have fun, kid." And he says, "Huh, fun is my Chinese neighbor's middle name." Yeah, that... <laughs> and you're like, it, it's not like racist. It's just maybe a little insensitive. Yeah, but it, it, it made me laugh as a kid. And when he was uh, singing, "Oh we God, have the whole world in oh, your hands," okay. <laughs> in Chinese, that dropped probably Oof. a whole letter grade for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> that was the, that was the, oh, just boy. like mimicking uh, the language, not even saying anything. Mimicking yeah. multiple languages yeah. too. Yeah, he he does French, he does Swahili, I think he does Chinese, he does German. Yeah, and and then he, yeah, it then seems he, less offensive when he's fucking up the German than he's doing the Chinese. It's hard for me to think because like I could see how that could be offensive, mm-hmm. but. Based on the character that's presented to us in the film, it's I'm not saying it's forgivable, but you could, it's understandable that yeah. he would because he's he's so just gun ho of being himself and not really thinking of like the consequences of his actions. Yeah. This character is just, it, he's just so annoying, though. He's so high energy. And, and, he can't and, even and turn it off when he's, he's when they're on the launch. He sneezes in his helmet yeah. and takes his helmet off, and he's ob- Which obnoxious seems like obnoxious a the whole time. Breach of protocol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's There's a lot of breach of protocol on this mission. He's just very relentless, and I get that's what the point of the movie is, but it would be nice if the movie pulled back just a little bit, just a little bit. It is appealing to that kid's sense. Yeah, exactly. So the stuff that used to delight me as a child, stop hitting yourself, that sort of thing, Mm -hmm. just the stupid like playground antics that happen when you're a child. Yeah. They lean really heavily into that because once they get on Mars, there's this nonstop bit where it's, I'm the first person to walk backwards on Mars. (laughs) You're the first person to ignore a person on Mars. (laughs) Yeah. You're the first person to be mad at me on Mars. (laughs) (laughs) It goes on for so long. But the... Every little bit that he encounters makes it worse, which makes it feel like a Fairly Brothers movie, which oh. which uh, iconic or ironically, I should say, his first real big movie, his actual first movie he was in was Dumb and Dumber. He played the the cop, yeah, his cop. Yeah. Oh. He was all you boys sucking back on Grandpa's cough syrup. <laughs> I didn't even Get recognize. Get the hell that. out of here. <laughs> but yeah, that was his first his first takeaway, his first introduction to 
the of us to Harlan Williams was, uh-huh. was that. Mm-hmm. And then he was in Down Periscope. I think he had a pretty small part in that. The parody submarine movie. Uh, yeah, the one With Kelsey Grammer. It has that stars Kelsey Grammer, Lauren Holly, and Rob Schneider. Yeah, and then he was in. It's been on the same level as this. And then immediately after that, in the same year he did Wag the Dog, and then the next year he did Half Baked. Oh, so that's half-baked. he's in Half Baked. Yeah, he's Kenny. He's the pre- preschool teacher who gets oh, that's right. Who gets yes. busted? He feeds butternuts that's, the cotton candy and the pink popcorn and the pr- Cheetos and the that's pretzels. Right. Yeah, I completely forgot that he was in that movie. Yeah, he's the one. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, yeah, he gets he has to he gets guarded in jail by that's um, oh by god. Tommy Chong. Yeah, Squirrel Master. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I actually saw that movie before I saw Rocket Man. You saw Half Baked before. I'm pretty sure because I was in Half Baked came out after Rock yeah, Man, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but I, I that how much later? Two years. Oh, okay. I really got a good laugh when the lunar lander lands on William Sadler's character, and Randall comes over and he goes, "In times of extreme stress, your adrenaline gets running. If your child is pinned over a car, what if I pretend you're my child? Do you need to call me mommy? Call me mommy." <laughs> Please, mommy, help me. No, say it like you mean it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. Say then, it like you mean and it. And then, as he once he once he gets out and he's safe, he goes. He, he says, "I love you, Billy." And he said, "Don't ever call me Billy." Yeah, don't ever call me Billy. That's no way to talk to your mother. He just, <laughs> he just doesn't know. But um, the other thing I think is interesting about this character is it it also exists in a parallel universe to like Ernest P. Worrell. Sure. Um, because Ernest has all these weird powers. Like he's almost like a superhuman. Mm-hmm. He can do damn near anything. And is um, is essentially invincible. <laughs> in this movie, Fred Randall, he holds his breath longer than any human ever on, on <laughs> yeah, existed he's on the planet. Human. Yeah, he can withstand G forces and still wants more. He drives another man insane in a forty-eight hour period in the isolation chamber by singing John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. It's what he is a perfect specimen. <laughs> Yeah, I know. He's pa- I like to see Harlan Williams or Fred Z. Randall against a xenomorph. A xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be great. <laughs> that would. I know. Rocket because, Man Two. Like yeah. when, <laughs> Rocket Man Two. Hey, would you look at that? He's got a little mouth that comes out. I wonder if he ever <laughs> ever put a little tiny top hat on him when he go to a formal events. <laughs> I, I think we're on to something here. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're on to something. It's uh, like one of those versus videos that you see on YouTube. Fred Randall v. someone. <laughs> oh, like the history historical figures, Lincoln versus Andrew Jackson or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> epic rap, rap battles. Like it would be. Have you ever seen like those animated videos where like, superheroes like fight each other? And- two million toddlers versus one Tyrannosaurus Rex or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. One Fred Randall versus <laughs> a xenomorph. <laughs> a xenomorph. It's alien versus predator versus Fred Randall. <laughs> 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 Alien v Predator v Randall v Fred. Yeah. And then ult- ultimately at the end of the movie, it, it culminates in a little bit of a harrowing experience where there, the storms come in and Jeffrey DeMunn's character, he's like the lead operator down on yeah, uh, a, at HQ. Yeah. He's we our intelligence says there's no storms. What is his mo- What is his motive? He just doesn't want to be wrong. Yeah. I don't think he can stand the ego. I feel like yeah. that guy, that actor always plays the role like that. <laughs> Except for in Walking Dead. He plays a pretty likable guy in Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. I know what kind of man you are. I know what kind of man you are. The, this The <laughs> filmmakers actually spent nine weeks at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. Oh, cool. And they shot at the famous rocket park, the gargantuan building that houses all of the spacecraft mock-ups. That's sweet. And Building 32, which houses the world's largest thermal vacuum chamber and simulates all conditions of outer space except zero gravity. Wow, that's dope. That's why they have the artificial gravity. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) What Disney does perfectly, especially in this time era of Disney, is they have a very tight story that is just short and simple. Mm -hmm. They implement humor. The writing is very simple. And for that, I can appreciate the tenor of the movie Mm -hmm. is because it's not trying to be something greater than it is. Uh, But to go on to your point about the last part of the movie, that was a very harrowing thing. It's it's terrifying. They're caught in these windstorms on a foreign planet. Yeah. 140 million miles from home or whatever. Yeah, they're eight months away from Earth. So I 
actually did sit up in my seat and I was like, holy shit. Like, I knew that everything was going to be okay. But as, um, as far- I think the, the, <laughs> Disney movies are famous for killing off main characters. But as far but as far as captivating my attention, like they definitely hit it out of the park with the, the climax of the film. A uh, big guffaw, big production, a boner in the production mm. when he farts in the suit and says it wasn't me. <laughs> William Sadler's character says, we're 35 million wi- miles from anyone else. It's really 130 million miles. Oh, Jesus. Freaking idiots. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was oxygen deprived and he was, he was <laughs> it's taking in methane. This, yeah, he was taking in this man's uh, <laughs> gas. I like when they're hooked up to the oxygen together and he's annoying him even more. And he says, he says, you ever worry that there was someone under your bed when you were a kid? I used to think there was a baker under my bed as a kid. It's just an abject nonsense. <laughs> I don't no, understand. I didn't think about that. You ever look under your bed as a kid? No, I didn't. How do you know there's not a baker under there? <laughs> so stupid. It is. It's so dumb, but a little kid will love that. Yeah. I'll love that. And of course, we get Chekhov's rewiring the entire system in two minutes or less in the gyroscope. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And we get, to, he says, the rock hits the rocket. And he says, is there any way out of this? He says, yeah, you're going to have to completely rewire the entire system in two minutes or less. And you'd either have to be a complete idiot or a total genius to do that. Luckily for us, he's both. <laughs> that should be on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> and then the culmination, of course, is that he decides to turn on, turn off the anti-gravity and dance a redemption dance with his love interest. Made out of the foil. Yeah, the foil yeah, blankets, the, foil the gold, blanket. gold and silver foil blankets, which he had eight months to spend doing. Yeah. So he jan- dances with the astronaut Julie Ford. And they dance on the ceiling and stuff. Jamiroquai stuff. A lot stuff. 2001. <clears throat> yep. Yes, yeah, for 2001 and later on Inception and a little bit of, I think it's a Fred Astaire movie that does that too. I can't remember, but I thought that was a fun scene. And uh, when I was watching with Brianna, she says that she was, as a kid when she watched it, she was obsessed with those outfits. She wanted the the, uh, the foil The outfits. reflected foil dress. Huh. Yeah, which I thought those were, that was a fun production bit. Yeah, so. yeah, that was great. So that's Rocket Man. That yeah. is Rocket Man. Any other specific points you guys wanted to call out or mention? There was one thing. Oh, at one point in the movie, the Harland is told to have fun, and he he goes, "Fun is my Chinese neighbor's middle name." Them talking about Disney being afraid huh. that Chinese viewers would be offended, but huh. the Chinese fans would actually found the jo- that joke to be funny. Oh, cool! But. Not him doing imitating the, the Chinese <laughs> yeah. Chinese language. Yeah, yeah, I figured that's I figured it's lashed onto the wrong horse. <laughs> but yeah, that's I don't really have anything else to say. Okay, yeah, just yeah. Tyler. Anything? Any other scenes you wanted to bring up specifically? Well, no, I think we covered all the bases. Uh, yeah. All right, let's put a grade on it, Tyler. Why don't you give us a grade for 1997's Rocket Man? Okay, so this is con- this is a very conflicting thing for me because. I would give it an A I want, for... I, I want a U grading, not for your little one. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll for leave. Sterling K. Brown. No John way. Sterling. Yeah. But, okay, so not for the little John one. John Sterling Minor. Yeah. Uh, I think for myself, I would give it a C minus. All right. I think the production's okay. The writing is tight and everything, like the story is tight. It doesn't lull or linger or anything. It's a... Really cool one hour and 30 minute movie. And uh, yeah, personally, I will not seek this out again on my own accord. Okay. Oh. You won't pay another $4 to watch this? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I forgot I paid $4 for it. <laughs> God dang it. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to seek this out on my own accord. However, I can appreciate that this movie was a well done movie, a well done children's film. All right. So it's- C minus from Tyler or Joseph. What are you going to give Rocket Man? Uh, yeah, I think C minus or yeah, that's a, that's a good grade for it because it's not for me. I don't find it funny anymore. I don't know if I ever did. Um, <laughs> I think I enjoyed it more as a kid, but as an adult, I, yeah, I probably wouldn't revisit it, nor would I, uh, put somebody through it. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but, I feel um, ashamed. <laughs> but yeah, and there was like small moments that were funny. But overall, it was just like him making everything into a joke, even if it's not the character trying to make a joke the entire time. Yeah. I think the fact that it's telling the audience that this is a joke over and over again, mm-hmm. I think that would that got grading. 
and uh, kids are dumb. It's a you turn, gotta, turn off. You gotta tell them a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, remember, so, kids, this is a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So C minus also for you. Yeah. For all the loving praise that I've heaped upon this, it's not a great movie. But it is an enjoyable movie for me, and I think it has he has enough staying power to be considered one to not forget. Feels like a kid's version of Ace Ventura in a way, oh. but he's a less competent, more annoying Ace Ventura. Mm-hmm. It's hard to be more annoying than Ace Ventura. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a historically very annoying character. Mm-hmm. You're either in or out with it, and for this guy, I was in. Yeah. But I understand why people would look watch this and go, "This is this is bottom of the barrel trash," but. <laughs> I don't think so. I think there's some garbage ass Disney movies from that era that you should yeah. never ever revisit or think about or talk about ever again. Yeah, yeah I would definitely not. I don't identify, think there's one of them. So. I, would, I would not identify this movie as bottom of the barrel. No, I don't either. So for that, I'm giving it a B minus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that it's uh, for the movie that it's trying to be. It is pretty good. It's not the best version of that, but it's not the worst. And I do love myself some Harlan Williams. I think he's a chaotic good. <laughs> chaotic good. And we need more of that in the world. So Love it. All right, so that's it for Rocket Man. Now it's on to the Wheel of Destiny. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. All right, Rocket Man off the wheel. I'm going to replace it with a movie that I've heard talked about on the Cinematics Facebook group a number of times. Our old pal Bruce is a big fan of this movie. I've heard it recommended with high praise. I know Tyler knows about this movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about it. It's called The, uh, the Abominable Dr. Fibes or Phoebes. Can you tell Fibes. me? It's Fibes. Yeah. P H I B E S. And again, I know. Fibs. I literally know nothing about Fibs. this. Fibs. <laughs> But I have it on good authority that's in a, a fun movie, an interesting movie, a good movie. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Vomitable Dr. Fibs. Vomitable Dr. Fibs or Fibes <laughs> from myself. Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Tyler. American History X from Tyler. Eraserhead from Joseph. City of God from Joseph. And the new Patreon pick, which we didn't have on last week, it's going to be from Patreon Linda, my dear Aunt Linda. Hmm. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, a Kevin Costner classic. Oh, wow. Yeah, and which is like one of the most prevalent VHS tapes on the planet. So like <laughs> everybody and their mom had Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves on VHS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anytime I buy a, a batch of VHS tapes <laughs> off of Facebook Marketplace, guaranteed of that. And what was the other one? Oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <gasps> uh, Blackberry from listener Javier and Hard Ticket to Hawaii from Pete. New listeners, this is what we're going to watch next week. We got two picks from each of us and two mm-hmm. from the Patreon. If you want to get on the wheel for a full review episode of your choosing, uh, join the Patreon for the five dollar and up level, and you're on the wheel. So here we go. I hope it's one of my movies. This is what we're gonna watch next week. Yeah, it's been a while, Tyler. <laughs> and it's City of God. Sweet. Dang it. The Brazilian dramatic, depressing movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I remember it being depressing and also very exciting. Probably an app description. So, so yeah, <laughs> City of God. I don't know if it's streaming. It says streaming on... You can rent it on Amazon for sure. It says Showtime, but I don't know about that. Direct TV. In the slums of Rio, two kids' paths diverge as one struggles to become a photographer and the other a kingpin. In the, and it's set in the, the literal city of God. That's what it's called. Yeah. And it should be interesting. It looks very gritty. Lil Z. Lil Z is like the one that wants to be a kingpin. Yes. Yeah. One of the famously most shithead kids. He's a he's a he's a tyrant of a child. Oh, he yeah, grows yeah. up into a tyrant of an adult. Yes. I I've, I've seen this a long time ago and I re- re- recall it fondly. Yeah. So So yeah. Excited. Cool. That'd be fun to rewatch. Um anything else, fellas? Nope. I think that's it. Okay. So listeners, thank you for tuning in. If you're on the YouTube, thank you for that. If you're one of the OG classmates, thank you so much for sticking with us. Um and thank you so much to our cool ass yard dudes on Patreon. That is Javier, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbin, and Chris. And like I said, if you want to get your movie on the wheel, five dollars and up gets you there. That gives you a cool ass yard duty status. Anything above that, we really appreciate everybody. Everybody who contributes, it makes a big difference. And yeah, we're grateful for all the listeners, but specifically to our Patreon members. Thank you. Until next time. Thank you for joining us as we review the classic stupid comedy from Disney, Rocket Man. <laughs> 
Follow us as the we get whiplash as we review City of God next week. Hmm. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MCFC podcast and send us an email, MCFC podcast at gmail.com. And follow us on Instagram at Middle Class Film Class and leave us a voicemail, why don't you, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on TikTok at Middle Class Film Class and on Twitter at Podcast MCFC. That's right. Go to the YouTube page. There's all kinds of good stuff through there. Share it with your friends. That would make a big difference to us. We really appreciate it. See you next time. See ya. See ya. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.